Hi, I'm Semben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled MOSFET Switching Losses Explanation and Demonstration by Simulation. There is a video, a relevant video to the present one, which is available at my YouTube channel. I'm putting here the link and also the link will be available at the web page, YouTube web page of the present video. So you can click on it and get to the earlier presentation. Now there are two parts to the switching losses and I'm talking about hard switching. One is the turn on and one is the turn off. If we look at the turn off, turn off means that the current is flowing through the inductor into the transistor and I'm turning it off. The pulse, input pulse is going down the drain current of the transistor will go down, the drain voltage of the transistor will go up, and there is be an overlap between uh, the going down of the current and rising of the voltage, and this overlap means power loss, and the area here of the product is the energy loss per switching instant, that is in this particular case, per turn off. Now during turn on, we have a more complicated situation in hard switch PWM converters. The reason is that we start off with the current flowing through the diode. So as the transistor is turned on, here it is on, we have a reverse recovery phenomena here. So there's a large current flowing through here. Here it is, it's this peak. And again, we're going to have an overlap between the drain and the drain current and drain voltage, and this product is power loss, and the area is the energy. Now, the switching losses are prevailing in sort of old PWM converter, hard switch PWM converters. I'm showing here now a synchronous, uh, say, buck, could also be considered as a, a inverter leg. Although we have a synchronous operation, that is one transistor is on and then the other one is on, but still we do have a dead time and during the dead time the diode is conducting and we do have again the uh, reverse recovery. Obviously if uh, this is a shot key diode, uh, then uh, the reverse recovery is lessened, but in general this is the phenomenon. Now the reason is that uh, we do have a situation of make before break. That is, the diode is conducting, once the transistor is on, the diode is conducting the reverse way. So in fact you have a, if, if this represents a generic PWM cell, you have the inductor switching between one port to another, you do have a uh, connection here uh, between these two and current is flowing this way. So I'm going to discuss some of these phenomena um, by demonstrating it with a simulation uh, circuit, a uh, simulation result. And here I'm showing a, you might say, synchronous uh, back or half bridge in which we are uh, considering the lower transistor. This source represents the inductor, 20 amp, and uh, I'm keeping this one off. There is a body diode here, which is not shown. And here we have the pulse generator, which is feeding the gate. Uh, and I'm using the conventional way, of one for on, and then we have, during the off uh, instant, we have a path here through a resistor which is smaller. Uh, I'm starting with R on 20 ohms and R off of 5 ohms to, f to make the turn off fast and I'm going to talk about it. So this is this, this setup. This is the power supply. Now in order to get some more information I've put here two integrators. IDT is an integrator and one is integrating the product of the uh, current through the uh, MOSFET times the voltage across it. So this is the power dissipated uh, by the transistor 
And then this is, by the way, not taking into account the capacitance uh, here, which is dumped into the transistor. We are just neglecting it here. And then the other integrator is just integrating the input current to the gate. So we can see the total charge going into the gate. It is just an integrator. So let's have a look at the results. This is just a general picture. I'm just going to discuss it just to familiarize ourselves with the results. I'm going later on to go into details, in zooming into a certain section, but let's just have a look on the general picture here. Uh, the Bordeaux uh, pulse here is the uh, generator. I've put here a rise time of 20 nanosecond, which is kind of uh, practical. We have here the gate voltage. Here it is. This red waveform with a peak is the current of the transistor. The blue one is the voltage on the transistor. Okay, this is the voltage on the transistor. Here it's going down and here it's going up again. Here we have a uh, second uh, window here. We have the product of the drain voltage times the drain current. So this is the power dissipated, the instantaneous power. I say it's a high power, but it's an instantaneous power. And this is during the turn on, this is the turn off. Here we have the gate current going into the gate. And this is uh, the the turn on and here we have negative current during turn off and here uh, I, this is again the product and it's calculated differently here actually there is a contribution of the uh, current going into the gate which is small so let's not worry about that and then we have the integral of the product of the voltage times current of the MOSFET. So this is the energy loss. The, this jump is the energy loss. So it, here it's about, I don't know, 15 uh, micro, this should be micro joule, of course. And here we have this jump here. This is the contribution of the turn off. Uh, you see typically that here we have a higher loss and this is because of the reverse recovery. And here, since we had a speed up resistor for turn off, uh, it's uh, much smaller. Uh, I can say that uh, here this gray line is the integral of the input uh, current to the gate. So this is the charge, accumulated charge, and of course goes positive and then it goes back to zero. So it's a capacitor which is being charged and uh, discharged. So, Let's have a closer look now at the uh, turn on instant. We have here the pulse coming in. This is the current of the transistor. This is the voltage. Notice that until the dial stop conducting, the voltage is still the full voltage. It's a 60 volt because the dial here is conducting the reverse direction. It's a short, so we still have in this particular case, because the leakage is uh, small, or the stray inductance is small, I'm talk I'll talk about it a little bit later, uh, we see here the full voltage. And uh, the voltage of the gate is going up, and then in, there is a plateau here, and then it's uh, going up again, and this is of course the voltage of the drain and uh, this is sort of the full picture uh, zoomed in. So let's uh, go into the details here. Um, until we reach the plateau, nothing really happens. The voltage at the gate is charging by the current flowing through this capacitor and this capacitor, which is by the way clamped uh, here. So uh, it's going up linearly until we hit the plateau or the threshold, I should say, of the transistor. Okay, at this point the transistor starts to conduct. And here now we're going to have the 
current of the reverse of the dial, the reverse current of the dial, this, this is it. We are still at the plateau and the voltage is about to start going down. Okay? Now, it should be pointed out that this, from this point on, the voltage is about constant. This is this plateau. And uh, the reason is that during this period here, during this period here, I'm going to show it here, during this period here, during this period here, the current is fairly constant, both for the transistor itself and the gate current. Now, the reason is that we are swinging at this period, we are swinging here the voltage from here to here. As we swing it, the, volt, the current is about the current of the inductor and therefore there is very little need to change the voltage of the gate because the current is about constant. So therefore during this sequence here, this period here, the voltage stays at the threshold, here it is at the threshold, while the rate at which the voltage is going down is actually determined by the gate current that goes this way and the voltage across CGD, the gate to drain capacitor. Because as the current passes through this capacitor, we have a rate of change, which is the rate of change of the capacitor and the transistor, which is the current of the gate, divided by the value of this capacitor. So this is why the larger will be CGD, the slower will be the drop or the VDT, the drop in the voltage. Finally, everything counts down. The current is already the inductor current. We have the pulse itself, of course, is constant. The drain is already very close to zero because it's heavily conducting. And the gate voltage still climbing up because the voltage of the pulse is higher than the threshold. So these two capacitors are still being charged by the input and going up to the maximum, which would be the uh, pulse voltage. So this is the picture during the turn on. Now if I increase this inductance, which represents stray inductance, which you will always have in a circuit, no circuit without stray inductance, because once you have wires, you have inductance. The question is how large they are. And um, I've increased it to three nano Henry. And what you can see here is this nasty oscillation, which are very typical. And the reason is that we have a resonant circuit here. We have a resonant circuit. This is a zoomed, um, it's a close up. Now the oscillation here or the frequency here depends on the equivalent circuit that we have. We have an inductor. This is the stray inductance. This is the ca total capacitance of the upper part. And then we have this lower transistor with its own capacitances. So therefore we have here a, a resonant circuit. And this resonant circuit oscillates. We are at the lower transistor. We are at this region. In fact, the, the resistance is low. And uh, so what we see here is that um, we have a uh, oscillation with the drop that uh, depends on the Q of the quality factor of the, of the system. Now what about turn off? Here we have the pulse going down. We have the voltage of the gate lagging because you have the capacitors have to be charged until we reach the plateau again and then the current starts dropping. At this, at this point, the voltage starts to go up and the rate of this uh, 
increase depends, of course, the rate of the reduction of the current, but also of the output capacitance of this transistor. And the larger the, the output capacitance, this, the slower will be the rise. So if we quickly turn off uh, the drain current, we can minimize the overlap here. I'm just showing the overlap between these two. So here is now uh, the full picture of what is going on. This is the turn on. This is the turn off. This is the power loss during turn on. This is the power loss during turn off. Gate current, gate charge. And here is the energy loss. We see here that during the turn on, it's about, uh, say, 15. This, this should be micro joule, should be micro joule. And here we have, uh, well, it's less than that and this is during uh, turn off. Now, in the original system that uh, the results are shown here, uh, the turn off resistor was 5 ohm, the turn on was 20 ohms, and the 5 ohms uh, makes the turn off kind of quick, and therefore the energy loss is fairly small. Now, if I change the situation here, and what I did in this run, I've actually made R of very large, so in fact, this, this is like an open circuit, and I have only one resistor, and it is 40 ohms for turn on and turn off. And in this case, here's the picture. This is with 40 ohm turn on and turn off, and this is 20 ohm turn on and 5 ohm turn off. And what we see here, and it's a big difference, here the scale of the energy goes up to 88, and here the scale of the energy goes to um, 26. You see here the large area here, and you see here the large jump, 62 microjoule as compared to 13 with the uh, smaller resistor. So there is no question that you'd like to have a turn off resistor very small as practical. Now what about turn on? Well, turn on, we have a problem because we have this reverse recovery. And if uh, the turn on resistor will be very small, so it will be a very quick turn on, we would expect a much larger spike here. So there is a trade-off uh, that you'd like to keep the spike here, which is of course causing EMI uh, to be reasonable uh, value, and therefore uh, normally you'd like the turn-on resistor, R1, to be larger uh, so as to slow down a little bit the turn-on, while the turn-off you like to make it as quick as possible to reduce the overlap between the current and voltage of the transistor. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.